Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. Welcome. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Welcome, welcome. Please go ahead and share. Please go ahead and share. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Go ahead and begin to share. We're going to pray. This morning I came to tell you, don't block your blessings. Don't block your blessings because of unbelief. Bible said my people perish because of lack of knowledge. When you don't have knowledge of the word of God, you won't believe. So somebody open your mouth and let us pray. Open your mouth and let us pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Open your mouth and let us pray. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Somebody go ahead and begin to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. My God. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Don't block your blessings because of unbelief. I came this morning to talk to you. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to his name. Go ahead and share, people of God. My God, let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you. When you believe, you will receive. When you don't believe, you won't receive. When you believe, you will receive. When you don't believe, people of God, you will not receive. So I encourage you, open your mouth and pray. The reason why some of us are still asking for the same thing year to year is because we don't believe. Hallelujah. The reason why many of us are still praying the same prayer from last year is because we don't believe. We're asking but we don't believe. We don't think it can happen to us. We don't think we are worthy. We don't think it's possible. My God. Yes. So I encourage you to open your mouth and begin to pray. Glory to God. I I encourage you to open your mouth and begin to pray. When you believe, you will receive whatever God has for you. The reason why some people are jealous of what you have is because they don't think that they are worthy to have it. Yes, so they don't think that God will give it to them. So they want you to receive and then they come to you. Some people refuse to pray. Some people refuse to pray. Jesus. 
because they don't believe. They don't believe, so they refuse to pray. My God, I encourage you this morning to open your mouth and declare it over your life. Whatever you desire, he will give it to you. The Bible make it clear. He will grant you the desire of your heart when you delight yourself in him. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will grant you the desires of your heart. My God. My God. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will grant you whatever you desire of him. He is faithful and just to forgive you, to bless you, to open your doors. Hallelujah. That is the God we serve. My God. So I encourage you this morning to open up your mouth and bless God. Open up your mouth and thank God. Open up your mouth and begin to worship God. Glory to God. Open up your mouth, people of God, and begin to bless His holy name. He alone is worthy. He alone is faithful. We serve a faithful God. We serve a God who is not selfish. We serve a God who is not ignorant. Open your mouth and begin to talk to God. My God, whatever your need, he said he will supply it. I will supply all your needs. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. God is faithful and he is just. Hallelujah. He said, I will give you what you need. I will never hold anything back from you. The, yes, the expectation of the righteous will never be cut off. He said, I will give you what you expect from me. He said, whatever you expect from me, I will never cut it off. I will open those doors. But you got to believe. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and begin to pray. My God, thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I come before you. I just want to give you thanks, Lord. I just want to praise you. I just want to adore you right now. Somebody open your mouth and pray. I just want to thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercies upon my life. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for me. Mighty God, I believe that all things are possible. Lord, I believe that all things are possible. Thank you, Jesus. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe, mighty God, that whatever I ask in your name, I will receive it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I believe it. Oh God, whatever I purpose in my heart, I will receive it according to your word. I will receive whatever I ask you for. My God, I thank you. I thank you for this opportunity to come to you one more time and to give you thanks and praise. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as I open up my vocal cord to worship your mighty God, the doors will be open. As I open up my mouth to bless your name, my doors will be open because I believe. Somebody open your mouth and bless the Lord. He said, whatever you desire, as long as you delight yourself in him, he will grant you all your desire. Whatever you desire of the Lord, he will give it to you. When you believe, you will receive. Don't block your blessings because of unbelief. Don't let the spirit of unbelief destroy what God has for you. I came to talk to somebody here this hour. I don't know who the Lord sent me here to talk to. But you are praying the same prayer and nothing is happening because you're just saying it. You got to believe it. When you got baptized, when you gave your life to the Lord, it's because you believe that you will be saved. You believe that you are looking on your direction to heaven. So when you believe that God can give you all that you need and you don't have to fuss, you don't have to borrow, you don't have to beg, you don't have to lay down with anybody, you don't have to lie to get it, you don't have to steal to get it because you know God will give it to you. 
He will open those doors because you believe. Somebody said, I believe. Somebody said, I believe. I believe all things are possible. I believe. I believe. According to the word of God. I cannot receive it unless I believe. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as I open my mouth this morning, I decree and I declare that my prayer requests are about to manifest in my life. My God, according to the word of God, according to Jesus Christ, he said, whatever I bind on earth, it's already bound up in heaven. He said, whatever I loose and hurt, it's already loose in heaven. So I believe that my blessing is on its way. I believe my breakthrough, it's on its way. Because I believe and I know I'm going to receive. I believe that he who started a good work in my life is about to take it to the perfect day of Jesus Christ. I believe. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe that when, when, when the word of God is spoken over your life, if you don't receive it in your spirit, it will never manifest? <laughs> Glory to God. Do you believe that when a word is spoken over your life, if you doubt the word, it will never come to pass? I don't know who the Lord sent me here to talk to, but I have a testimony. I have a testimony. I have been preparing for ministry. For the last six, seven years, I did everything that the Lord told me to do. But yet I was struggling with my faith. Because I said, God, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to be a leader. God, I'm not worthy. Don't put this burden on me. Yes, I said that. I don't want this burden. Mankind is very hard to deal with. Mankind is complex, especially women. Mankind is complicated, especially the ones that were raised up a certain way. Mighty God. So I said, God, don't put this burden on me. I'll do whatever you ask me to do, but don't just put no ministry burden on me. And let me tell you something, people of God. I've been in training for years, just like Elisha and Elijah. And when the moment came for me to get prayer for a job, because I cannot keep a job, the same way some people cannot keep relationship, I couldn't keep a job, and I give it my best. But I'm here to tell you, when you are trying to fit in a place that you don't belong, it's because you don't believe that there is greater out there for you. I was fighting with people to find me jobs. I was struggling to stay on a job. I'm not late for my work. I'm not late. I'm, I'm, I'm obedient. I'm disciplined. I, 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 yes, I am on time. People of God. I, 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 I don't lie. I don't cheat. I do everything that I'm supposed to do. And I know how to behave professional. But I still get a fight. Because I was always pushing doors that were closed. I was always pushing doors that God already closed. And then one day, one bishop came here from West Africa. And that bishop came to church on a mission for a couple of weeks. And when he said, all you who are here that need a job, come up and let me pray for you. And I walk up there with confidence because I know I got everything I need to apply for any government job, any office, anywhere in America. I'm qualified. And people of God. When the man get to me, he was praying for everybody. People were falling on the floor. And when he get to me, he said, you are going to bring the word of God all over the world. I'm going to pray for your ministry. I look at him. I said, but I'm asking you to pray for me for, to get a job because you said, come up if I need a job. He said, I'm going to pray for your ministry. And people of God, I was offended. I said, look at this man trying to embarrass me. And I know what I asked God not to do. 
I said, God, don't put no ministry burden on me. I know I have the, yes, everything it takes because I'm trained. I'm trained in every area. But the problem I have, I was afraid to go out as a leader. And the night when that man prayed for me about ministry, people of God, I didn't go back to church because I don't want to see him. I was offended. I was in, I felt insulted because here I am fighting to find a job to pay my bills. And, and this man came. It was two years ago. It was two years ago, 2018. It's not long. Two and a half years ago. And let me tell you what happened, people of God. The man prayed for me. I didn't receive it. I'm being straight up right here. I didn't receive it because I don't want what he's calling out on me. He's a man of God and he prophesied. He's a bishop. People of God, let me tell you what I did. I didn't go to church for, uh, yes, for a while. I thought, you know, he was gone. I'm waiting for the man to leave. I'm here in the pastor's seat. Waiting to be ordained. But here I am. Don't want this man to prophesy in my life about ministry. I was hiding. I was running. And so finally I went to church one Sunday. I thought he was gone. And who showed up to preach? The man. The bishop. I'm talking people of God. I'm sharing my testimony. My unbelief was blocking me. My finances. My ministry. Because once you're obedient, God will find a way to bless you. People of God. I'm still sending out my resumes. I'm looking for a job. I can't find any job. I'm looking for a job. I can't find any job. And God began to say, I told you, go to school and I'll take care of you. I said, I know that, Lord, but I need to work because I'm qualified. I'm qualified. I can work. Anything. Construction. Anything. Because I used to do construction work when I was in the Cayman Islands. Yes, I used to do drywall. Because I love money. I love money, so I love to work hard. I go hard. Construction work. When I was in the Caribbean. And therefore, nursing assistant work, it's not working out. Mental health, it's not working out. Job coach, it's not working out. All these qualifications, it's not working out. And therefore, that Sunday when I went to church and he was praying for the pastors. So I had to go face him. And he was praying that when people don't work, they shouldn't eat. But when I walk up there, he takes my hat off. And he apologized to the church. And he said, this woman is going to bring the word of God all over the world. People of God, as soon as that man said, I receive it in my spirit. I fell on the floor. Let me tell you about Jesus Christ. And the thing that happened in church, I didn't hear a half of what he was saying. Because it was the Holy Spirit that took over. Because once I saw that man standing there on, on, on the podium, I know it's a wrap. He was praying for pastors now and for all everyone that's there that need a job to come up. And he was going off and he said if you don't work you're not supposed to do this according to the word of God but soon as I stood here I was in full white it was first Sunday white hat white suit and before I know I was on the floor because he, uh, the first thing I remember he apologized to the church and he said this woman of God is going to bring forth the word of God worldwide all over let us pray for her I'm looking for a job. I'm still looking for a job. Here I am, two and a half years later. The ministry is here, but I'm still looking for employment. Why? You see, this is the thing people have got. I was doing the best way I know how. If I don't work, I don't eat. So my unbelief was blocking me. But today I came to tell you here. It was blocking the ministry. It was blocking you from being here today to receive prayer. Uh-huh. Just to let you know.
when you go into the book of Matthew chapter 20, what? 21 and verse 22. Let's see what it says. Because God sent me here to talk to somebody today about unbelief. Unbelief can hold you hostage in bondage. Every place I go to work. So once I begin to listen to the voice of God, he said to me, when you order, I pray for my prayer shawl and I put it on. He said, order prayer shawl and anointing oil. And yes, this is what you need to do. Order these things from Israel and supply my people with it. People of God, let me share something with you. I was ashamed. I repent. He said, you know how to sell stuff. So order the oil and the shawl from Israel. Order the holy water from Jordan River. This is what, you see, I, I still am trying to, 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 to I'm, every day I repent. Every day I repent. People of God, I'm here to tell you this morning. Because I love money so much. I wasn't interested in doing anything in ministry because I want my paycheck. I'm used to my paycheck. But every place I go to work, it's always something for me to leave the job. I work hard. I just want you all to know that. I am a principal person. I am disciplined. Some place they couldn't stand me because every time they miss me, they found me praying. I'm always pushing doors that are in places that I don't belong. I don't know who I'm talking to here today. But once I gave birth to my ministry and I said, I need a prayer shawl from Israel and I order it. The Lord began to minister to me. When I bless it, he said, from no one, this is what I want you to do. Order the oil and the shawl and supply my people with it. People of God, I was shame. I was shame because of pride. Pride comes from, yes. Pride is not of God. Pride is not of God. The man again didn't pray for me to find no job. He was praying for my ministry to be birthed. He was praying for me to give birth to my ministry. He, the man was praying for me to travel the whole world. He was speaking it into existence. I don't know which one of you here was struggling, is struggling with what I was struggling with. I never wanted to be a leader because I see the pressure that some people are under. They can't do it. So I said, nah. Nah. Oh no. Not me. I was serious. I said, yes, I know I'm called to ministry, but not to do that. I was thinking about my flaws. And God said, I already pay your debt. I already dropped your charges. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you better get it right and jump on the bandwagon because God is getting ready to push you out. You're about to give birth to ministry because according to the book of Matthew, chapter 21 and verse 22, it said, And all things whatsoever, mighty God, you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Don't allow your unbelief to block your breakthrough. Don't allow unbelief to block your ministry. Unbelief can block. You listen to me, people of God. It can block your ministry. It can, I didn't believe. As much as I was trained. But Zachariah was a priest. He was a priest of the church. And when his time come to have a son... The angel of the Lord had to shut his mouth. Shut him up. Silence him. Sometimes some man of God or woman of God have to go into, yes, isolation. Because they don't believe. 
So God have to deal with them. I came this morning to talk to some people who still are struggling with their faith. Who still are struggling that leadership is in them. That God is calling them to leadership. I don't know who the Lord sent me here to talk to this morning. But I came with a short message. According to what Jesus is saying. All things... Let me, let me start at verse 21. We are in the book of Matthew chapter 21 verse. I'm going to go start at verse 21. It says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which done to the fig tree, but if you shall Say unto the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. It shall be done. If you have faith, hey, if you have faith, you shall speak to your mountains. And it shall go into the direction that you are asking it to go. My God, my God. I came to talk to somebody who doubt, who is in disbelief, who is suffering with the, with the syndrome of unbelief. It's a poison. That's one of the reasons why I never wanted to go to Facebook to preach. Because I see how people treat leaders on social media. How they disrespect them. How they insult them. How they, oh, yes. Because I see. So I said, Lord, don't push me in that, in that line. I don't want to join that line. But I he I'm here to tell you, when that bishop began to speak, I don't know if it was the sword that he came with, or if it was the word, or if it's the whole gospel that brought the power. I don't know. But that day, because I rejected the message before, but that day I couldn't. I couldn't hold back any longer. I'm saying this right here. So whoever God sent here to receive your blessing, receive it and run with it. I didn't receive mine the first time. So avoid the man for, yes, I thought he went back home. And I told him. I told him after service was done. I said to him, let me tell you something. I have a problem with your message. I have a problem with the prayer. Because you told me to come for prayer for, to get a job. And when I show up, you're praying for my ministry. And I didn't like it, so I didn't come back to church. Yes. Because I'm looking for money. I have my bills to pay. That man didn't say a zip. He didn't speak. He didn't speak. People have got to let me share this with you. Don't allow unbelief to destroy you. It was after he prayed and I received it. Then the Lord told me about the prayer shawl and the anointing oil. So he said, if you believe, if you have faith, you could speak to the mountain. And it will move. So this right here is a faith move. It's a faith move. God told me to do this. I was never even thinking about going back into this type of thing. To sell anything. To supply anybody with anything. Because when I used to do it in the Caribbean. They, they tried to credit my stuff. And it turned. It, it, yes I created enemies with it. In my business. So I came to talk to somebody here this hour. What is the problem? What are you struggling with? That you think you'll never have. What did God say about you? That you didn't receive it because you don't believe you can do it. God will never lay a burden upon you. And not be there to see you through it. He is a provider. Wherever there is a vision, there will be provision. God will never tell you to do something unless he have a plan. So I came to talk to you who are struggling with that thing. Mighty God, he might have said, open a business. And you are saying, no. You're worried about the money to start the business. He might be saying, it's time to go back to school to study. And you are saying, no. Maybe you can cook. 
and you you you, you don't have a, the, yes the, the the area that you need you can cook but you don't know anything else about the the, the, the business and God is saying you're gonna have to go to culinary school maybe you love to talk but you don't know how to form the words properly. And God is saying you need to go and do a course into motivational speaking. Maybe you're an interior decorator. And God is saying in order for you to go through certain doors, you need that paper. Because you're gonna have to license, you're gonna have to insure your business, you're gonna have to register your business. Maybe Bakorobo Kosaka Shataya. Trust God in this time. Trust God. Somebody say you're speaking facts. It's true. Some of us were pushing down doors. Going into people's place of business where we don't belong. Because they know. Some people can just look at you and tell you don't belong in their place. But they're not going to tell you. They want you to leave. Some people know you will never do well in certain things. They know they can't push you around. So you better run. Somebody said, talk to me, Rev. It's true. Jesus himself is talking right here. Jesus said, if you have faith and doubt not. So you see, doubt is poison. Doubt is a disease. Doubt can kill you. Doubt can hold you back for life. Jesus said, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do which I have done to the fig tree, but also you shall say unto your mountain, be thou removed and, it, and cast it in the sea. It shall be done. Let me tell you, Jesus spoke to the fig tree and it dry up because it bear no fruit and he was hungry. If God is using you to provide and you are not providing, then your tree is going to dry up. Somebody said, Lord, save me. If God is saying that I bless you to be a blessing to ministries and you're not doing it, then you are not moving in your calling. If God said you're a kingdom builder and you're not building up the kingdom of God, then you are not moving in your calling. If God said, I'm just saying whatever God said. Whatever God said about you. And if you're not doing it, then you're not living your truth. You're not living your truth. Whatever God said about your life. And if you are doing opposite, my God, you're not living in your calling. You are not moving in the direction where your breakthrough is. Many of us, we don't know. Our blessing is wrapped up in some things and we have to unlock it. My money was locked up in Israel. I've never gone to Israel yet, but I'm going. I'm going. I'm saying this right here. My blessing was locked up in Israel, but I needed a word, mighty God, from the man of God to release in my spirit. But the devil was using me to tell me, block this man. He don't listen to this man. No, you need your job. You need to drive miles and miles and miles a day and be tired and don't be preaching anything. Do you know how many times the devil tell me don't come to social media to preach? Do you know how many times the devil told me that some people are not worthy and I need to not speak to them? Yes. Yes. But I'm here out of obedience. My blessing was locked up in Israel. You see, all I had to do is be obedient. And God begin to speak to me once I accept the fact that I'm going to do his will. So he can get glory from it. He, he begin to speak to me. He said, go ahead, order some prayer shawl, order anointing oil, order the salt, order holy water. I'm going to take care of you. Just supply my people with these things to increase their faith. Hello? Hello, somebody. You see, so my blessing was locked up in Israel. My blessing was locked up in Israel. Somebody say, Israel, here I come. My blessing was locked up in Israel. And I didn't have the keys. 
The devil was fighting it. Yes. You see, God will use you to do things that no one else around you is doing. So you don't have a competition. Of all the knowledge and the education and the this and the that, that's not what God wants. He wants something small to start. This is why we have to embrace our small beginnings. According to Zechariah, again, chapter 4 and verse 10, you have to embrace your small beginnings. The reason why many of us don't believe is because when God is giving it to us, he's not giving it to us all at once. And because some of us are so greedy, we want, if, if, the, if the door didn't open wide in our face, we don't think it's a door. I came to talk to somebody here today. Don't allow unbelief to stop you. Don't allow unbelief to block you. Don't allow some fool, my God, to whisper stuff in your ear to distract you. Jesus said right here, if you got faith and you don't doubt, you will speak to a fig tree and it never bear a fruit. Jesus was hungry. He was with the disciples. And the tree that was supposed to be fruitful, bear no fruit. May you be fruitful right now. Jesus of mercy. May you be fruitful right now. May everything in your life begin to blossom. May every seed that you have sown begin to germinate in the earth. You know, last night the Lord gave me a revelation. I wouldn't say last night. It was about 1.30 in the morning. I was laying there and the Lord began to say, there are some people on your platform. They have sown seeds in other ministries, but because they are here on your, on your platform, they are, be, they are begin to learn mighty God, faith and yes, and patience. And God is saying, your seeds that you have sown in other ministries, they are about to germinate. The Lord said, your seed didn't die. The seeds that you have sown in different ministries. I hear the Lord said, I should tell you, it didn't die. Now that you are praying, they were in the ground. You are praying and your prayers are watering those seeds. So they are about to germinate and bear fruit. They are about, you see, if you plant some peas in the ground, when you plant those peas in the ground, those peas will begin to dry up. That doesn't mean it died. Because the seed is on the inside. So when you, the rain was poured down on it, when you begin to water it, then it begins to spoil. So when it begins to spoil, that germination takes place. So sometimes something might be in the ground for such a long time. You stop praying because you sow a seed. You're waiting. But once you start to pray, your prayers will water it. So it will begin to spoil. It didn't die. It begins to spoil because it be, the, the earth begins to break down. Mighty God, the protein in the seed. So it begins to spoil. And that's when germination begins to take place. And you continue in prayer and it begins to grow. It begins to spring forth. Because germination, yes, you know, sperm is germs. And it's, I'm, I'm talking to somebody here. And that's how an embryo is created. It's just like the earth. It spoils the seed. And when it's spoiled, out comes the germ. The germ, it comes up. So it germinates. That's where germination, that's, the, that's where the word germinate came from. Because the germs begin to come out because it's spoiled. It's just like if you cook and it's there sitting down on the stove for days. It begins to germinate. But because it's already broken down, it won't grow its smell. Germination is taking place. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who God sent me to talk to. But your seed that you saw in that ministry didn't die. I'm talking to somebody here who have sown a big seed in ministries. Quite a few of you have done it. And God said, this was 1.38 a.m. When I look at the time. 1.38 a.m. 
when I look at the time, the Lord said, tell them that their seed didn't die because they are coming here on this platform i have directed them to this ministry so they can pray and have faith their faith is lifted so now they are praying about even those old seed it will begin to germinate somebody said my seed didn't die my seed will never die my god my seed will never die oh god my seed will never die jesus said oh you all you need is faith. All you need is faith. Don't block your blessing. Because of unbelief. Don't block your blessings. Because of unbelief. Your seed will never die. All those seed, if you look back, that you have sown. I'm talking to some sower. We have all kinds of people on this platform. You have the sower. You have the waterer. You have the reaper. Hallelujah. Which one are you? My God. He said, I give bread to those who love to eat. And I give seed to those who love to sow. So God said, I will give you bread if you like to eat. I will give you seed if you like to sow. I'm talking Bible. Jesus said, and all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. It means that once you're praying and you believe, you will receive. I only share my testimony. I was praying. I was fasting. But that's not what. You see, when you are fasting and praying for something, and something will show up, it allows you to scratch your head. Because you say, what is this? I'm praying for that job. Because I see the job opportunity. That government job that gives me all these benefits. And I can retire early. No, they're talking ministry. That's not why I'm here. I just want to do what I got to do and go home. But whatever God said about you, it shall surely come to pass. Even if it's a day before your eyes are closed. So here I am, two and a half years later, with prayer shawl, with anointing oil, with holy water, because I was obedient. I begin to move according to the word of God. I begin to move according to the word of God. Supplying God's children with anointing oil. Some people don't know the purpose of the prayer shawl. But tomorrow I will be talking about the purpose of the prayer shawl. What it does. The reason for it. God told Moses to make them. And supply the children of Israel with it. And for generations to come. So we are the generation that came. So we won't live in sin. This is the purpose of a prayer shawl. But tomorrow I'm going to go into the scripture. So you can get a full understanding. The reason for the prayer shawl. When God gave me the revelation. And I begin to dig into the word of God. And I found the scriptures to back it up. I just, I just love on him even more. This was what the woman that had the issue of blood held on to. The woman that had the issue of blood, she held on to the prayer shawl of Jesus Christ and she was healed. Elijah, my God, Elijah mantle, he used to cast it on Elisha. He didn't have to say anything to him. Who was supposed to be his successor. I came to talk to somebody this hour. Believe and you will receive. Believe and you will receive. Whatever God said about you, it will come to pass. But you got to believe. You got to believe. Only you. Only you can block you. It doesn't matter what no one is doing out there. Only you can block you. 
Only you can block you. Only you can block your breakthrough. All Jesus said. If you have faith and, and done that. If you have faith and doubt not. That's it. All you need is faith and doubt not. Mighty God. All you need is faith and doubt not. And in the book of Mark. Yes. Jesus. In the book of Mark chapter 11 and verse 24. He says, therefore I say unto you, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe and you will receive them. And you shall have them. And you shall live with them. And you shall love them. And you shall worship the Lord your God. And you shall live in peace. Why? Because you believe. It doesn't matter what nobody say to you. Believe in the things of God. Jesus Christ himself is talking. I'm only reading about what Jesus said here. Jesus said. Therefore I say unto you. What things soever you desire. When you pray. Believe that. And receive that. Because I say that. That's what Jesus said. Good morning. Good morning. When, welcome to breakfast with Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome. Just believe. Somebody said, Lord, I believe. Hallelujah. People of God, we are going to pray. Somebody said, Lord, I believe. Somebody said, Lord, I believe. He said it right here. In Matthew, he said it. In Mark, he said it. Don't doubt. Just believe. Somebody said, Lord, I believe. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened me. Lord, I believe. I can speak to my mountain and it will move. Lord, I believe that whatsoever I ask in your name, I will receive. Lord, I believe. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know who God sent me here to talk to, but I came to let you know whatsoever you ask in his name, you will receive. Whatsoever you ask in his name, my brothers and my sisters, I beseech you by the mercies of God. Whatsoever you ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will believe, you listen to me, you'll receive it. Let no one tell you otherwise. Ask. He will direct you to the right platform because churches are closed. Mighty God, many of you, they're not preaching this message in your church because, hey, 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 we are here to pray. Many of you are not even going to church because you are stuck at some job. So this is your church. Somebody said, Lord, I believe. Somebody said, Lord, I believe. And I thank you. I thank you, Jesus, for this word this morning. I will not hold myself back any longer. I will not hold myself hostage. My God, my God, my God. Lord, I believe. I believe. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this message. I believe all things are possible. Lord, I believe. You see, this is the thing, people of God. If you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, you will be saved. And this is why you gave your life to the Lord. But no, in, in, in regards to your personal life, if you believe that you can receive, you will. Believe. Believe. Because if you don't believe, it won't come. It won't manifest. It will never happen. I went to church the time. It's Yes. And the man of God, he prayed over me about ministry. Going all over the world. To, to, hey, I didn't want to hear that. I need a job. I need a job. I got my bills backed up. I stayed home for a while. Said, I'm not going back. I don't want to see that man again. I'm serious. I'm not confessing. I'm sharing my testimony. And when I went back to church, the man was still there. Because I thought he went back home. He was a visitor. And let me tell you what happened. I went up again. He said, all pastors come up. So I pray for you. He just finished preaching that everybody have to work. Because you have to pay your tithes. 
And honestly, I didn't have a dime. All I had was $6.84 in my bank account. I'm not ashamed to say it. Six and people have got, I'm talking about what, 2018. I couldn't pay my rent. I told no one about it. No one know anything about me. Because if you know me personally, you will never know. That's who I am. I'm always laughing. I'm always cheerful. I, I'm serious with the word of God. So I come off this like this. So don't, don't juice, don't, 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 just don't let this face fool you. There's no starch in my face. I'm not made of wood. I'm human. But when it comes to the things of God, I take it very serious. All that was in my account was $6.84. And let me tell you what God did to me. I ordered my prayer shawl and my anointing oil. Because a little money came to my hand. And when I put it on my head, it came from Israel, and I begin to bless it. I hear the voice of the Lord said, from now on, this is what you're going to do. Order these things from Israel, bless it, and supply to my people. Anointing oil, prayer shawl, holy water, and these things. That's it. That's it. So here I am today. Here I am today, moving in obedience. Here I am today. Order your prayer shawl, your anointing oil. It's here. Because this is what God said. And if this is what God said, then so shall it be. I'm not fighting God anymore. People of God, believe and you'll receive. Don't allow your fears and your doubts to rob you. No. No. I encourage you. Don't let these things rob you. I'm sitting here and I'm talking to you today. Allow God to bless you. He will open the doors. You just have to believe. Yes, work your faith. I don't know who God sent me here to talk to. So I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and begin to share this word. Work your faith. It's your faith. Faith without work is dead. So work it. <laughs> work your faith. Work your faith. My time is up. I have to go. I just came with this message to encourage you this morning to work your faith. Amen. Whatever, whatever you're doing, believe that God is first and foremost and he is the one who brought you here and he will never leave you to suffer he didn't bring you this far to left you behind so I encourage you my sisters and my brothers work your faith whatever you believe you will receive if you believe you're going to fail you will fail yes I'm saying it because it's true if you believe that you're going to fail you will fail if you believe that you're going to make it, you'll make it. Stand on the Lord's word. Stand on the word of God. His promises are yes and amen. All of his... Thank you, Jesus. All of his promises are yes and amen. Remember, people of God, if this message has blessed you, go ahead and be a blessing. My time is up. If this message has blessed you, Mighty God, go ahead and bless the ministry because you believe. Somebody said, Lord, I believe. If this message has blessed you, go ahead. Go ahead and be a blessing. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey. <laughs> if this message has blessed you, go ahead and be a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm here to let you know, God will never lead you blind. Nope. God will never lead you blind. He will never steer you wrong. He will never send Please me drive to, to highlight you. a road. He will never t send me here to lie to you. So I encourage you. I encourage you. Move in faith. 
move in faith move in faith in this time faith without work is dead amen have yourself a blessed day remember people of god today is what the eighth day of the month and please send off your seeds for charity we're releasing that money on the 15th of the month hallelujah amen my time is up please and if the lord tell you to bless the ministry go ahead and be obedient god bless you all have a blessed day